Good morning, guys and girls. Hi, hello, everyone.、Uh, this is EJ back again with another narrated art time lives video, and I am so excited that I finally could get to present this particular artwork that took me about what nine months?、Uh, well, almost a year. I started I started last summer, and I just now wrapped wrapped this up.、Um, In April of 2021, so yeah, I started like、uh, in June of 2020. So it took me a year.、Um, and according to the title card, it took me like 52 hours plus.、Um, so yeah, I was working in this particular illustration on and off for about a year. An hour here, an hour there. You know,、um, it was really hard to find a good chunk of time、uh, to be able to do this.、Um, But you know, I just did it the slow method way. <laughs> so yeah, an hour here, an hour there,、um, until finally I'm able to finish it. So yeah,、um, so excited! I finally got to finish this. I worked hard on it, but I love, love this illustration. But before going on about this illustration, I think now would be a good time. To talk real quick about what's going on with the time lapse,、uh, because this few parts are gonna go by real fast, real quick. So、uh, initially, I did some inspiration sketches,、um, some、uh, some initial sketches just to kind of get an idea of.、Um, Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was slightly distracted. So I was doing some、uh, just initial sketches on、uh, inspiration for like clothing and whatnot, and just general like、uh, just feeling out the illustration. So that's what the very first thing that I did initially, and then after that,、um, I decided to take this old blender、uh, scene that I have.、Um, That I use for、uh, this illustration I was working on.、Um, just to quickly recap, basically this illustration was a 2016 illustration, and I decided to restart it last year.、Um, so I had a bunch of old files, and basically I took some of those old files and edited it. So that's what you saw me do in Blender.、Um, I took the old file, kind of changed a few things around, which I'll talk some more about it.、Um, and then after I changed some things around, I did a render, and then finally, I took that render, obviously, and put it back into Creator. I did a real quick sketch, which is just what you just saw me just do, right? And then what I did was I took parts of the old sketch that I had from 2016 and kind of merged it into this、uh, new sketch that I have in, from 2020. And then after that, I did this quick color scheme,、um, and I'll talk some more about this quick coloring、uh, scheme that I did later on. And then I'm doing a speed paint. Basically, this thing that we are watching right now. Is basically my three-hour、uh, speed paint version of the scene because I wanted to just get a good composition feel and a good idea of where I wanted to take things with the illustration, basically. So this is what we're watching at right now. And then after I do the speed paint, then I'm gonna develop it some more,、uh, do a finer sketch,、uh, which took a really long time.、Uh, well, you'll see that in a few minutes, and. Yeah, just generally, just do a much better job with rendering this whole scene out.、Um, so yeah, but that's what's gonna happen.、Um, now I guess it's a good time for me to just go back and rewind some more and、um, talk real quick about some of the ideas and what this illustration is. Especially since most of my Western friends are just not gonna understand what this scene is. My my Filipino friends are just. Are, they're gonna get it. They're gonna understand what this this illustration is all about because it's a Filipino、uh, thing. 
um, basically the illustration is called Tinikling and Tinikling is a Filipino dance and it's a very very unique dance because the dance requires the props uh, the use of the the use of bamboo sticks basically and it's a very very interesting dance um, to, qu to quickly explain how Tinikling is done basically the sticks that uh, you see on the ground floor right now they open and close um, and I'll talk some more about uh, the opening and closing and how problematic that was for the illustration but the the sticks open and close and so basically the dancers have to dance around the sticks basically so you know obviously you have to jump out uh, between the closing sticks because you know if your feet is still in between the sticks when they close and obviously you're just gonna get your fit <laughs> feet stuck so basically the two dancers have to jump in and out between all these sticks and then do their dance moves and, and it's a really cool dance to watch like i urge everyone to watch tinikling videos there's actually a bunch in on youtube and just generally anywhere in online you'll see a bunch of tinikling videos and it's a very very cool dance because it's just technically hard i mean you really have to get your timing right just to make sure that your feet don't get caught between those closing sticks because when those sticks close <laughs> and your feet's still there then yeah ouch that would hurt so but um so yeah my filipino friends are just going to instantly understand the idea behind the illustration i basically have this series of paintings in my portfolio that are kind of filipino based slash texas base of sorts um or western influence um i basically grew up in philippines uh i moved here in america about uh, 1993 when I was uh, 14 yes I am that old <laughs> but um so yeah I basically grew up both in Philippines and in Texas so I kind of have that influence um, on me on the the two different cultures have that much influence on what I've grown up to be basically so and so when I decided to do this illustration or when I started doing this series of like uh, Filipino paintings in my portfolio, like I, I combined elements on them. The very first one that I did was Patintero, which is uh, a Filipino game. It's not a Filipino dance, it was a Filipino game. And then the way I painted that was that it, the game's not very clear um, now that I'm thinking about it. Um, yeah man wow that illustration might need to be redone too because that's a very complicated illustration to pass the idea Ooh, sorry just random thoughts aside kind of got sidetracked just thinking about that but um uh, the very first filipino slash filipino american painting series that i did was patintero uh, and that was the first one I did. And in that particular painting, the, the kids are playing a very Filipino game. And there were some very Filipino elements to it. Like there's a chimney in the background and a tricycle in the background. But everything else is very, very Americanized. Uh, the kids are wearing, you know, modern day American clothes. And like the building is kind of Victorian, um, kind of neoclassical European in style. So it was like a mishmash of styles, you know, and that's kind of like what I was trying to do because, you know, it's a combination of the cultures that I both grew up in, you know, America and Philipp Philippines, right? So that was the very first one that I did. Now I followed that with Afternoon Jackstone. And Jackstone, it turns out, is a British game. I thought it was a very unique Filipino game, but I was so wrong about that. It turns out that it was a British game played predominantly in a lot of British nations. Um, and then somehow it became popular in Philippines too. Um, but the kids, when I was growing, I never played it. But I know that my sisters did and my neighbors did. And they were, you know, they played it a lot. So... Um, in that particular illustration, it was the same concept, Filipino game, but the only thing that was Filipino about that particular illustration is the Jack Stone, although now I can't really call it Filipino because apparently it's British. 
and then everything else is like European style. Now, this one is the third one in the series, um, which is really late. Like, because I did those two illustrations like way back, maybe 2014, 2015, and then I kind of dropped the series. And then I've always intended to keep on doing the series, but you know how it is uh, with life. Uh, things, people always get sidetracked and whatnot with their projects and all this great stuff but yeah um sometime in 2016 i decided that i was going to do a patentero um illustration but the way the patentero was going it was just like not going very well um my techniques is just very amateurish still back then um I still have problems of over rendering back then. Like I remember when I started doing that illustration, I think I was about 10, 15 hours in and I was like nowhere near complete. Right. Like I, it was just, it was pretty slow going. And so somehow I got, I dropped it. Right. And then I didn't start thinking about picking it up again until like last year. And so I was like, well, let me check out the files, see what's going on with the files. And it turns out that I could actually work with some of the files that I had previously. Um, now it's actually a good time that <laughs> that I'm talking about this because on, on the screen is, as you can see, there's this old sketch that I did that I ended up having to cut out from the old illustration and like using it basically as my basis for my new illustration. See this girl that I'm tracing over right now, um, the one underneath that lighter sketch was the older version. And then obviously I'm redoing the sketch, um, mainly because, you know, I, I had to do some perspective edits um i mean i could have just used the old one the old sketch obviously but um but i couldn't because of uh perspective issues that i was going to run into which again i will talk about later but anyways uh, i guess sidetrack. uh i was talking about my filipino series and the idea behind this so i've wanted to do a patentero dance continue the filipino series i'm probably going to continue them some more uh in between projects that i'm interested in doing um what the next project is i'm not sure yet um i got started on filipino games i'm probably going to do filipino games continuously um although there's some aspects of filipino culture that i like like christmas scenes filipino christmas scenes are very interesting for me i don't know how i'm going to work that out yet but at one point in time i was trying to do an illustration that has paroles in it which is like a very filipino christmas thing but anyways yeah i, I don't know where that's gonna go so but going on back about the illustration and talking about like the perspective issues and whatnot. Um, so what I was going to say about the whole perspective issue was that when I picked up this illustration in 2016 and I started looking at the original Blender file that I have, I realized that I have so much composition issues with the old one. And so that's when I decided to change things around. I decided to still take the same props that I have, the same assets, you know, because I mean, if I've already modeled the assets slash didn't really model it because I I took those characters actually from a from a base file, um, like a human base file. I'm not sure if it was done by Make Human Generator or if it was by Manuel Bessioni's uh, character creator. I'm not quite sure yet where I got those characters from, but I knew that I got it from a character generator of sorts. I did that or I got it from BlendSwap. I, I don't remember. I wasn't doing a very good job at keeping track of my assets back then. But I decided to just take this Blender file and then just reset the whole scene. And one of the very first things that I did when I reset the whole scene was the camera. I, I knew that I changed the camera's angle settings, which means everything perspective wise was going to change and i remember thinking that when i do this 
I'm going to have to redraw everything. Like I was going to discard all my old sketches, which I was so hesitant about doing because I didn't want to. Um, because I knew it was going to be labor laborious and labor intensive. Um, but I was clearly wrong. Um, when I resetted the whole scene and finally got my Blender render, um, when I imported it into Krita, I, I was wrong. It turns out that some of my old sketch I can actually use. All I have to do is just do some slight edit modifications on it. Um, which is what the case was, or which is what happened just a moment ago when I was talking about me tracing over that girl and there were some perspective issues and whatnot. Um, so basically what I did was I cut up that old illustration and took some elements from it that I, that I knew I could keep such as the dancers, right? And just kind of just move them around until they were all, um, line up correct correctly perspective wise and then as soon as they're all line up um then you can see that uh i started tracing over it to get a cleaner sketch <laughs> i realized this this whole sketching thing took forever it was like a three or four step process that i did um, basically I took the old sketch, did a quick sketch and then did the speed paint. And then after the speed paint, after I got some critiques on it from uh, some of my friends online and in real life, um, I, you know, I obviously saved the old sketch. So I basically, um, took that old sketch and then defined the sketch more, um, well really the crowd really so like the first step was like the first sketch for for the speed paint the second sketch that i did really was just more for the crowd right um i basically wanted to get a good firmer idea of what the crowd was going to look like so i started looking up for references online and then started you know doing really quick sketches of characters cheering basically i mean i remember that was one of my google searches crowd cheering crowd uh sports games yeah da, da. um so i was like trying to get a bunch of expressions just from those google searches and i did a quick sketch on it and then after i have all these sketches basically i combine all this you know really quick sketches and then combine them all in one layer then turn down the opacity and then finally started on my clean line sketch which is what we're looking at right now um because i you know technically i could have just kept like the first two sketch sketches process um the first rough draft sketch for the speed paint the second sketch that really was more about the crowd rather than the foreground characters and i could have just kept those two sketches and could have just run away with it right um but i really wanted a good clean sketch um so i took the time um to just do this clean sketch and <laughs> trust me it took forever like we are 20 minutes into the video right now so you can see that a third of my process was sorely devoted into getting this good clean sketch um and yes it is very labor in intensive it took a while but i love it just because i really think that the detailing process um was gonna go by much quicker and it did really i mean it helped a lot to have a good clean sketch because then you kind of just have an idea of what everything is going to look like instead of having to go gung-ho and troubleshoot it later i mean you kind of just get all the idea right there from the get-go which is great so yeah but now i obviously finish um the line sketch and i'm about to do my second round of quick coloring and then i'm gonna merge all those colors again into one layer uh, blend them all so i could get a base paint basically everything that i'm doing from now up until the point that i start detailing um they're all just quick edits just to get an idea of 
or just to get a base paint, this base layer that I work on. That kind of gives me a really good idea of how the whole illustration is going to look like and that all I really need to do is just to kind of just sculpt out the details. So really that's what I'm going to do in the next few minutes. I'm going to explain this process some more for the ones that's not familiar with my process. I'll explain it a little bit more in a few minutes. But for now just enjoy the show uh, and just enjoy the next few minutes of me doing really this weird crazy edits that it's just sort of confusing but all makes sense eventually so yeah just hang tight and just watch the show
So, um, what is going on right now is me, um, blending my scenes. So I've basically just gone through a round of coloring and then recoloring and then coloring and recoloring and then light, uh, filter adjustments and light adjustments and all that stuff. And then I merge everything into one layer. And then I use my blender textured brush to kind of, you know, semi blend some of the colors in when I do this blending part um I'm very very careful at trying to keep the general shape of things I mean you can see the crowd is a good example of it like obviously all the details are gone but you could still kind of tell where the people are what their poses are and whatnot so this is basically what I try and do um, before I start detailing is just I get to this base paint that I work on just so that I can have a good idea of how the overall look of the illustration is going to be. That was one of the things that was lacking in my old practice before when when I used to do things is that or the way I used to do things was that I would go section by section um, coloring things in and it, it was kind of a lacking experience for me or it was just very problematic experience for me just because I don't have a good idea of how things are well with this approach I kind of do I get a general sense of where the, my values are, which is really important. Um, and I get a general sense of the composition. And then I get a general sense of the colors, which the colors on this piece, I will have to admit, is <laughs> horrible. <laughs> but, or semi horrible. I mean, eventually in the end, it got rectified and got fixed. And it looks a little bit better now. But yeah, I could talk some more about the colors later. But anyway, so yeah, talking about the base paint, I'm basically this all I'm trying to do is just to get to that base paint. And then as soon as I get like a nice good base paint, I would start my detailing process, which is what's going on right now, actually. Uh, you can see me slowly start to detail the background sky. And I actually just finished detailing the background sky and I'm about to... Uh, start uh, detailing the crowd and again my detailing process is the same all the way throughout it's a three-step process it's um, I basically delineate my edges which means I make my edges sharper just so that my shapes get really clear I accentuate the shadows if the shadows need a little bit darkening they get darkened a little bit more and then um, I add highlights obviously and I do this section by section um, slowly start things you can see I, I'm beginning with the crowd now see I'm like you know kind of changing some colors around um, because they're too dark and adding some highlights and obviously I added the details in that girl's face and then on that guy's face I'm working on him and so yeah I just rinse repeat this process all the way throughout the scene this is how I do my final final detailing phase and you can see we're at 30 minutes in so really typically my detailing process takes about half the time um, that I take during my overall process and this is true even if it's a speed paint or if it's a long grind like this one and I've talked about this before I love long grinds this one it's just it really just tests my patience though because um, it's a long grind so um, but if I was to do a speed paint, half of my time, my speed paints are between three and five hours. Half of that time is spent on the detailing process. And then if I'm doing a long grind such as this one, which is typically 30 plus hours, um, the same thing. I spent half of the time detailing, uh, which is what's going on right now. But yeah, that's what you'll see me do in the next few minutes. And while that is going on, I could talk real quick about a lot of the problems that I was running into with this illustration um so one of the things that i mentioned earlier was colors um i my sketch zone my sketch zone friends are predominantly the ones who's been very very helpful with me with troubleshooting um my color issues and 
My color issues are just, I, I didn't have like a good palette to start things out with, or I didn't have a good system in my mind. Um, sort of, kind of. The thing is that, oh, before, before what I did was, I typically go for, um, uh, and why do I keep, uh, forgetting my color theory, uh, Hang on real quick. Let me do a Google search. Um, it's, uh, I keep wanting to say complementary. Uh, color schemes. The different color schemes. What are the different color schemes? Why do I keep forgetting um, my favorite color scheme? My favorite color scheme, scheme is triad. Why is it called triad? It's not called triad. It's... Split complementary. That was always my favorite um, uh, color scheme before I started using palettes, right? So before I was just doing everything as a split complementary scheme, but apparently my saturation values and and some of my color value or some of my color hues just keeps going out of whack um i use when, when i do my quick coloring phase just to lay down some colors i use a brush that has a hue variation in it and i think the hue variation on it before was like really really strong so even though i was sticking with a split complementary color scheme predominantly uh so my hues would go way off the range of the split complementary so um so yeah, my color schemes before was just whack. I I didn't really think of using palettes before. Now I do. Um, it's really interesting to make note of it because um, I actually noticed that halfway through I switched to using color palettes, which was funny because I, I never used to do it before. But at some point in time this past year, I switched to color palettes. Um, Color Palette Cinema is a great website. It's a great resource. I always go for Color Palette Cinema to get uh, palettes. They You get 10 colors and that's it. <laughs> it's very, very limiting, it sounds like. But if you think about it, uh, using the Zorn palette is even very, very limiting. But the good thing about just using 10 colors is that you can mix and match between those colors and then and combine them to come up with other colors, right? Um, but basically that's um, kind of what helped me eventually was limiting my color palette um, but even then since I've already started with a crazy color palette to begin with and I remember my sketch on friends making commentaries about it and getting me getting into another argument with them again because I, I kind of liked it before and then it really took a while for all their commentaries on it to finally hit me in the head. It's like, yeah, my colors are really all, all over the place. Um, which is the case in this illustration when I first started out. Um, and so, yeah, it was crazy. And then I started using the, the limited color palettes. But the way I was using it before was really whack because I would keep switching palettes, which I really shouldn't have been doing. It was funny to watch it. Um, like a few moments ago because I was like man I'm switching palettes a lot <laughs> I should just stick to one <laughs> so yeah it kind of totally defeat the purpose of color palette cinemas or using color palette cinema in this particular illustration I got better obviously uh, at sticking to one palette and all my other illustrations but initially at this one I was all over the place um but to quickly explain why I was all over the place with the palace and constantly switching palace was because I, I really had an issue with how colorful I wanted the crowd to be. You know, I wanted them to be colorful, but at the same time, I really wanted some form of color unity all throughout the piece. And then eventually... It, at the very end at the final illustration you can see that there is like an overall color unity of sorts 
basically the color unity that I kind of had in my head was to have the sky blue, the girl be bluish so that it would make like a triangular composition um, and then have everything else be slightly brownish slash slightly orange um, to contrast the blue because blue and orange would always make good contrast right so that was kind of like my idea in my head um, the only other exception to this rule is or to this rule that I have in my head is the guy in green the dancing guy in green like eventually he got fixed in the end too and I think at some point in time I might have edited the green out or completely or whatnot um, I wanted to highlight him too and kind of have him stand out from the orange background so I have him as green um, and whatnot but anyways um Eventually in the end, I just did like a filter edit to just kind of unify the whole color scheme. But for the most part, I was, you know, doing this whole blue slightly uh, blue and then slightly brownish color scheme for the rest of my detailing, right? This is mainly like orange and and whatnot and some pinks and purples in there. Um, but yeah, um... I just really had an issue with <laughs> with the overall color and I fixed it as much as I, as best as I could. I'm really hoping that the overall product is as unified as I think it is. I mean, I honestly think it could be better, but I also don't really feel like scratching my head and constantly troubleshooting the color. Um, I figured, you know, I could always just take up my... Uh, battle with color and the next illustration which I probably will uh, the next illustration that I set up to do a long grind on I think that's gonna be color problematic as well too so that's gonna be interesting to work on so yeah but yeah um, this has been a theme actually <laughs> in a lot of my illustrations I've mentioned colors so many times it's not even funny how many times I've mentioned it it is a struggle it is a learning lesson. I am constantly trying to figure it out and improve because really that's the whole point of the artistic journey is to realize what's going on, realize what the mistakes are and fix it. So yeah, my colors were all, all over the place it used to be. And to defend myself, which I mentioned before with um, my sketch on friends, uh, some of my color decisions isn't really all that off because I mean there's Henry Matisse Henry Matisse is a great example of a guy whose colors are just whack but it worked for him right and so I guess part of me wanted to try and do like this whole Henry Matisse thing but it just it wasn't working if I was to try and do realism which I've stopped pretty close to realism anyways um so yeah I just it just wasn't gonna fly so but yeah, that is my biggest critique of this piece. If anything else, it's just the colors. I personally think the colors could be much better. But yeah, I don't know. This is what we ended up with. A predominantly bluish, slightly orangey, pinkish, reddish uh, color scheme. Makes a nice good contrast, honestly. But yeah, um, just check out the next few minutes of me detailing and I'll talk some more about this piece later on.
So at this point I have started detailing the girl which is obviously the the last character that I detailed right um, and then the next uh, the rest of the video will be pretty much the, uh, predominantly focused on creating all the special effects that was needed to um, have the overall look so um, I can't believe that I spent this full hour watching this video and totally 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 neglecting uh the key the the key aspect like the 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 biggest aspect of the, the illustration which is the glowing feet like i totally forgot to mention anything about the glowing feet <laughs> and i can't believe i didn't mention anything about it so now would be a great time to mention it because i'm about to do the special effects part um, so yeah, in the illustration of the clean, obviously my idea was to really highlight the feet, uh, especially since Tinikling is a dance that involves, you know, really precise feet movements. Again, like I mentioned, the sticks on the ground open and close, which means you have to be quick when you're dancing, uh, just to make sure that your feet don't get caught between the closing and opening sticks, right? And so I figured, hey, you know what? I could make the feet slash legs to be the predominant light source in the whole scene, which is basically what obviously the illustration is. Uh, these two kids, two magical kids are dancing. And because of their dancing, you know, their feet are glowing and everyone's happy because it's like, yay, look, glowing feet, which is obviously not real, but, you know, it'd be cool to see it in real life. So, um, so yeah, uh, the glowing effect is basically like one of the biggest, um, draw on or the biggest key component in the illustration, I'd say. Um, and so yeah, it requires like a lot of special effects and basically the special effects that I did the lighting effects really is just a bunch of uh, Layers of colors uh, that are all set in Color dodge. I Think they were all just set to color. No screen. Some of them are set to screen and some of them are set to color dodge uh, so there's this soft orange glow that I turn on and off again just for me to get a good idea of how the look was going to be overall so i keep turning that on and off and i didn't want that glow to be there when i'm painting because i wanted to paint my scene without the light effects there i turn it on again um so i turn it on and off and really that was just the overall hey it's called overall glow <laughs> um so that layer is basically like the overall glow. I added extra lighting effects on top on top of really on the bottom of overall glow, which are uh, lens flare effects, a lot of lens flare effects. I basically uh, opened up GIMP and fired up some of GIMP's uh, filter lighting effects and then imported it onto Krita and put them all on screen mode. Um, so it could add to the overall lighting scheme. Um, so those were some of the lighting effects that I did. The other lighting, the other special effects that I had to contend with that is not very, very obvious and I'm kind of slightly upset about it um, is the motion blur. Um, I really, really, really wanted to indicate that those sticks are opening and closing and, and the best that I could do are, is motion blur and there is a motion blur um it's very subtle i mean most people would kind of have to take a look at the motion blur to kind of realize that it's there but the two foreground girls um the one in the orange and the one in the purple you'll see that their arms actually has some motion blur in it to indicate that their arms are moving uh back and forth like as if they're opening and closing the, the sticks again it's very subtle uh, it's not so obvious. You kind of have to like look at it to realize, hey, the the sticks are actually moving. Um, but I didn't know any other way to make it really super obvious, right? Um, because if I make it super obvious, then it just does not end up looking realistic at all. Um, the other special effects I did is the depth of field effect, which is what I'm doing right now. Um, 
I'm doing a marquee selection and um, just so that I could create a depth map. Um, basically, I will have a blurred layer and a non-blurred layer and the blurred layer will have a transparency map that will slowly show through uh, all the blurred effects. So there's all this depth of field effect and basically everything that I'm trying to do in for the rest of the scene is basically they're all just camera effects depth of field lens flare um, and whatnot are all very much camera oriented special effects and I kind of wanted them there um, just to provide some form of realism to the painting basically and then of course you know the special glowing feet is a totally different lighting scheme it's a totally um, it's a special effects that has nothing to do with camera. That's what I was trying to get at. Uh, and then after this, after this initial one, I posted this in my some of my art group, uh, and I showed this to my real life family too, just to get some critiques on on what they think. Um, my family and friends all think it's great, <laughs> so which is awesome. I'm glad that they're happy with it. And then, of course, my art friends and the art groups that I'm part of have um, some really good commentaries on, on what to improve on. Um, there was some debate on the girl's dress. Um, the, the It was mentioned the girl's dress is just really off. Um, but I decided to keep her as is because, again, like I said, I wanted to have her as part of the highlight because she is you know center of attention center of attraction and the whole triangular composition of the blue sky and the blue dress i kind of wanted to keep it there um and but i did desaturate her a little because somebody did mention that that the uh, main character is too saturated um i made the foreground characters the most foreground characters a little bit more darker um because I was uh, commented on and I also added a lot of of shadows um, because somebody mentioned that this scene really needed to be darker in a way uh, just to kind of accentuate this idea that um, the light source is there's really only one light source which are the legs um, and then I also vary the height on some of the people. Uh, somebody mentioned that the height of most of the people are all too uniform. So I had to vary some of the height and change some things around. So I had to do that, obviously. Uh, but yeah, um, after all those edits, I mean, everything was just pretty much straightforward. Um, the only other thing I did was, the only other extra thing that I did was do an overall filter edit just to kind of unify the color like i mentioned and yeah after that everything is all said and done for this really awesome uh illustration i, I really love this illustration uh, i'm glad i finally got to finish it um so yeah again i mentioned this before i love love long grinds long grinds the results on it even though i'm typically like uh, on some of my long grinds um i still love it you know compared to like some of my speed paints just because my speed paints are just half and half sometimes they're successful sometimes they're not while my long grinds even though some of my long grinds i would still consider it as like not my favorites um the overall technique feel of the painting is very very apparent so yeah um but yeah this is just me just trying to grow as an artist and constantly doing all these long grinds because i love them but yeah they do test my patience though because i mean that's the only thing with long grinds even though i love doing them they will test my patience just because it takes so long to to get it done uh, it does get monotonous and it does get boring. Um, but that's why I've totally changed my workflow habits because before I would really just concentrate on one illustration at any given time and just keep working in that illustration until I'm brain dead. It just wasn't working for me anymore, you know? So nowadays, um, 
I'm taking a much longer time in finishing my long grinds, but in between all these long grinds, I do all these short, quick projects. So that's how my speed paints have gotten so much better over the past year or two or three, really. Not really, the past three years, my speed paints have gotten better, mainly because I use it as a break from my long grinds because my long grinds, like I mentioned, does get tiring and monotonous and boring at times. So but the results are almost always better. So yeah, I'm just really glad I finally got to illustrate this. Oh man, all those special effects, they make it look so good. They toot my horn and everything. I really hate being <laughs> egotistical about my piece because I guarantee you I will, someone will do something. Someone will do a patentero or a tinkling illustration 10 million times better than this. I guarantee you. Someone in the future is going to come up with an illustration of tinkling and I'm going to be like, man, I wish I had done that instead. <laughs> I guarantee you. Um, but for this one, I really love this. I'm really happy with this illustration. And I'm glad it gets to be part of my portfolio. And I'm the one who made it. Because it's so cool. Yeah. But yeah. But yeah. Uh, this illustration is almost done. I'm just finishing up uh, my last few edits. Um, and adding this really blue i really like this addition of the blue i didn't even really think about doing it until the very last minute but i basically added like this blue hue on the two girls up front to kind of indicate the bright night sky you know i thought that was a nice cool little touch kind of added a little bit more realism to the lighting overall lighting scheme technically i could have done that with the rest of the crowd but i just wanted to be conservative and just leave it with the two foregrounds so yeah but yeah i'm doing my final edits on the blur i mean this is what all of this is it's just me just trying to yeah get my depth map all of this is just the depth map effect just editing all of it and then i'm finally gonna get my depth mapped right now there it is the depth map and then i'm going to use this to fade away the blurred layer see i'm creating the blurred layer there's the blurred layer and then after that i'm just gonna do the special effects and there you go that's it it's done thank you guys for watching this with me uh hope you guys learn a thing or two like and subscribe and i will see you guys in the next video Good night.